Hi everyone, this is just a quick video reviewing the book Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter. It's going to be a spoiler free review. If you haven't read any of her novels before, then this is a really good intro to the writer. She's wrote a lot of different novels and they're really fantastic things to read if you haven't picked one up already. So this is actually going to be the second novel in the series. Hopefully it is something that Karen Slaughter carries on and continues for many books to come. Um, in this novel we see the protagonist Andrea Oliver, often called Andy, as she tries to make sense of a chaotic life and escape her violent past. Now it's interesting to note that the first book is actually part of a series on Netflix, so if you're not too sure if you want to actually get involved in this series, please do check it out on Netflix. It's a really interesting program and it will get you hooked into everything relating to Karen Slaughter. One of the best things about this series is that Slaughter has been able to develop some transactional characters. So what we mean by this is the kind of characters that change and develop over time. Now that is actually the best characters you can get because just like real human beings, we do change and we do develop as we grow up. And that is something that is seen with Andy, the main character. If we think about the first novel or even the series available on Netflix, in pieces of her, a character is not really the most interesting one. She's a little bit kind of frustrating in times because she lacks a bit of direction in her life. She's quite a gifted artist. She did go to art school but never really followed through. She works at the call centre for the police. So at this point she's not actually working in any official branch of the um, armed forces or anything like that or for the police but um, she still is kind of attached to that um, profile as well. She lacks passion and enthusiasm for her job. It seems to be something she just fell into not something she's particularly motivated for or something she particularly cares about. She relies on her relationship with her mother. Now she's also in her early 30s so a lot of the time we are hoping that she kind of picks herself up, rises above and is able to kind of become that fully grown adult that we want her to become. She's also haunted by her past and the mystery surrounding her real father. Now this is actually a really interesting element because it's something that grows and develops as the story progresses and also when we look at the second novel as well. So in the second novel for Girl Forgotten, her character has changed quite a bit. She goes through quite a bit of trauma, quite a bit of difficulty in the first novel and in the second one she actually uses this experience to join the US Marshal Service so she's trying to actually take a bit of control and a bit of direction for her own life. She becomes a lot more stronger and a lot more capable so she does get herself into some quite difficult situations but she's a lot more skilled and adept at actually dealing with those situations. She's still learning because she's quite new to the job of being a US Marshal, but she's very determined to succeed. She becomes much more independent. She also makes the decision to distance herself from her mother and personal and physical relationships with other people. And she starts to take control of her past. The past that comes out relating to her father and the misdeeds that her father committed was something that really caused a lot of trouble in the first novel. And it's something that she really actually takes in her stride a lot in the second one. She dictates her future. So in the actual novel, it says that her mother is always saying that she's approaching every challenge in life as if it was a cliff that she had to fling herself over. And instead, she learns to jump to actually make the decision herself. That when something difficult comes along, that she's going to be the one that decides how it, it gets played out. So this is a really good thing about the series. And something I hope that carries on if Karen Slaughter hopes to actually can, uh, carry on this series that she starts becoming this much more independent and stronger character that I think she'll become. The craft of writing. So one of the fantastic things about Karen Slaughter if you haven't read any of her novels yet I highly recommend that you do so. She maintains a real high level of writing skill and accuracy. The level of description that she uses within a lot of her um, opening um, chapters and things like that really help to capture the audience's imagination and really shows that she is a one of the top potentially one of the best crime or thriller writers of our time now if you want to learn the craft of writing there are a few better contemporary writers to learn from than Karen Slaughter she has many different books um, a lot of them are standalone novels 
but she also has a series as well, which is well worth looking into. Criticism. Now this is something I actually struggle to do when it comes to Karen Slaughter. I feel like she is one of the best, if not the best, thriller writer around at the time. But there are a few things that I think um, could have changed or could have been adapted within this novel to make it a bit more enjoyable or a bit more engaging for the audience. So the first thing is this, is the central character. So we're talking about Andy. So in terms of the actual plot of the novel, it seems like she had quite a, a small impact on the overall story. She was often there to witness a lot of the events, but when it actually came to the, the big kind of shocking or scary events, she wasn't really controlling it, but she seemed to be more like there for the ride. And that might be part of the development of the character that at the moment she's kind of still not fully into this role as a US Marshal. But a lot of the time it seemed like a lot of the things were just happening naturally and she was there to witness them. Plot twists. Now one of the fantastic things that Karen Slaughter often does is that she has this amazing ability to make you think one thing and then all of a sudden flip on its head and really keep you on your toes and keep it engaging for the reader whereas this novel seemed to be um, following a lot of the traditional conventions of the genre it was very predictable and it followed a lot of the patterns that you'd normally associate if you read this kind of genre regularly however that doesn't actually take away from the enjoyment of the novel I just don't think it's going to be classed as one of her standalone best novels that she's ever wrote. Overall verdict. So is the book worth reading and would I recommend it? Well, in terms of my actual review, I'm going to give this four stars. And the reason why I'm going to give it four stars is because of this. Within the novel, Slaughter's um, high level descriptive skills really helped keep the novel uh, engaging and interesting and it's never really an issue to actually carry on reading it doesn't feel like a job or a chore to carry on going with this story the character development keeps the reader invested in the protagonist we are a lot more invested in this actual character and it's probably because we've seen that development since the kind of person who's a little bit bumbling a little bit naive maybe a little bit immature in the first novel and we've seen her grow a lot stronger and a lot more confident as it progresses. It is a very strong thriller that stands up well with the first novel in the series. A lot of the time with a lot of writers what they do is they do one novel which is really good and then the quality starts to dip but Slaughter has got to that level of professionalism that she's wrote so many novels now that the um, skill and the quality of her writing is consistent almost every single time. The only criticism we have is that it is a fantastic novel um, but some of the elements that are slightly predictable or typical of the genre. So it's a fun, it's an easy read, but it probably won't shatter all the boundaries that we have for crime or thriller writing. If you're looking for something just to get yourself, let's say, into this genre or to introduce yourself to Karen Slaughter, then this is a really fantastic one to get into. And if you're still not sure, again, there is the series on Netflix as well. Now, if you'd like any actual lessons on English or any support in actually developing your creative writing, then please do check out our other videos on this channel. And we also have other book reviews as well. So if you do like it, please do like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.